Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to say good morning again in one second, simply because I want to get this added to Facebook. So for those of you who are on YouTube, thanks for your patience. Okay, so welcome everybody. So welcome to Chatting with Wisdom. And um, as most of you know, we are in, still in uh, full-fledged Mercury retrograde, so not everything runs as smoothly as we'd like when it comes to technology. But I want to welcome you back to another session with Chatting with Wisdom. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Roli Allaire. Gigudo Migunque is my spirit name, and I'm your host of Chatting with Wisdom. So Chatting with Wisdom is a weekly interview series featuring amazing women. There are different ways that we that women are amazing, and I love to be able to celebrate that. So I invite you to join me in my private Facebook group, Mind, Body, Heart, and Soul Connection. And you can also find a similar group on Telegram um, that I have been using this year to be able to share positivity. So today, I would like to welcome Tammy. So Tammy Johnston is the hold your hand and kick your ass business coach. She has been working with solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and small business, business owners for over 20 years to help them build a sustainable and successful business. Tammy believes that business, uh, that business done right, honestly, ethically, and morally has the power to make the world a better place for our customers, our families, and our communities. She doesn't promise a magic bullet. Darn, why not? Um, because there is no such thing. Um, but she does teach all the basic basic foundational skills, mindset, habits, marketing, advisory team, financial system, uh, financial systems, cash flow, and profit. And you need to um, that you need to survive and then thrive. She only deals in real, practical, but put it to use training and advice that has been tested in battle. Welcome. How are you? I am very happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> So I love that. I love that, like, kick ass, let's get it done kind of thing. So because that is just so important. And like we see with a lot of different business coaches is that there's lots of fluffy that happens. And so I like that that direct approach of like, let's get things done. What do you need? How are we going to move forward? And what's the plan? So I love that. <clears throat> so that is amazing. And, and no magic bullet? Like, seriously? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Well, I kind of have this problem in the fact that I can't lie where shit. So <laughs> I just, I just think with, with honesty and, and I see all the ads through like Facebook and LinkedIn and everything else because I how I show up in the algorithm. So I get all the different coaches and stuff. And while a lot of them are, are fine, they're being they're they're either choosing to or they're being told that they have to they have to promise this magic bullet and all this stuff. And I'm going, I have been in business for so long, I'm going, I know for a fact that none of that crap works. It comes down to what are you doing day in, day out? Are you working on the right stuff? Do you have the right people around you? Are you consistent? Are you planning and executing the plan? That's another one. There's so many people that put all this time in putting together this beautiful plan and then never actually start doing any of the work. And then they wonder, how come my life and my business isn't working perfectly? They're going, because you're not doing the damn work. <laughs> <laughs> really? We have to work too? We can't just like use our power of our mind and it all falls into our lap? No, you have to use the power of your mind and do the actual work. <laughs> what is Darn. It? So, there's, there's a component that I think that many of us are missing. And Sorry, everybody, you know, well, it's just, oh, you, you, you think about about it and it comes, but I'm going, the parts that you didn't miss because they didn't highlight it, but they definitely said it is, yes, you have to put the focus in, but you actually do have to do the work. When you, when you, when you, when you get an inspiration, you have to act on it. <laughs> and that's the people, oh, I just have to think and it will come. I, I just attract and going, yes, yes, it's, it's not one or the other. It's, and... <laughs> And, and I see that a lot with mental health, right? So, cause that's my, my, my primary focus is working with women with anxiety. And so, and I often have people that say, yeah, well, I've been doing this for so long, or I've been working on this, or I have been working on that. And it's like, but have you taken the steps? What, what are the steps that you've taken to be able to move through to that next step? 
because those are and and ultimately that's one of the things that's really important for us to be able to do so one of the things that um that you wanted to be able to talk about is how to be able to move away from a job so that job um to a successful and sustainable business and so i see so many people that want to be able to do that shift and but they don't know where to start and there's one person in particular that i'm going to make sure that i am sharing this out to um because that's kind of one of the things that she's been stuck in is like she wants to be able to like move into that next step of um of becoming an entrepreneur but is so frightened about taking that step because she's afraid of where is it going to lead and how is it going to work so i'm looking forward to sharing this particular interview with her so tell me a little bit more about that that whole concept of moving from the job to becoming a su successful and sustainable business owner oh absolutely love this because i love getting people as early in their journey as possible like <laughs> idea stage up to two years because it is so much easier in order when when you're when you're in a job that you don't like to start putting things in place so that you can get out and i always tell people because i have a lot of people in that stage and they'll talk how much they hate their job i'm going good i don't want you to be comfortable i want you to think every day this is why i'm putting in the extra work and and i'm taking time away from the tv and all the other fun um temporary things so that you can build something so that gets you out of there you use you use that discomfort in your job to motivate you to do the things that you need to do so there there's a few different things that that you need to be doing um but the first off is what exactly is it that you want to do because a huge thing that people go is i just i want to start a business well, what exactly is that business what product or service are you going to be offering who are going to be your clients here's a big one how are you going to market yourself because you have to be marketing 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 no customers no purpose for business and there's 29 different ways that you can market your business you know here's the good thing you don't have to do all 29 nobody can do all 29 you only need to pick like three that you're comfortable with that you enjoy and do them consistently and a lot of people think that in order to be in business and to do marketing and stuff like you have to be the super outgoing extrovert and i can talk to everybody bs bs i'm a major introvert a lot of my clients are major introverts in fact that can be a major positive factor because as introverts we typically slow things down a little bit we're a little bit more thoughtful we plan things out and we're usually a bit more consistent so what do you want to be doing for marketing and you also need to be surrounding yourself with people who know what they're doing care about doing it right and sincerely want to help you like one of the biggest things that I found that when I went from the employee world over to owning my own business, within the first two years of owning my own business, my social circle had pretty much completely changed. Because when I was an employee, all of my friends, um, the people that we I spent my spare time with and things like that, they were all employees. And they're wonderful people. And they still are. Most of them are still are, are my clients and still are, have like 20 years but the conversations totally and completely change. You need to be surrounding yourself with other business owners. Because like I said, the conversations change, um, the motivations change, the things that you're going to be learning are going to be changing and you need to be surrounding yourself with those people. Um, you need to have a good accountant in your world. And a lot of people, well, I'm not making any money. Well, we're going to get you there or both thing that helps you there is working at accountants. A good accountant can help you um, with making a lot of decisions. They can teach you what numbers tell you because your numbers are wonderful storytellers, but most people avoid them because they think that they're complicated <laughs> and scary. Like the first thing that 99.9% .9 of business owners want to get, as soon as they've got the business up and running and they're going, okay, I need help. I can start bringing in 
to people help? What's the first thing that they want to get rid of? Hmm. Bookkeeping Doing. and accounting. They want to <laughs> yeah. do it. So they just abdicate it. And I'm going, no, wrong. I actually have all of my clients for six months to a year. I want them to do their own bookkeeping their own data entry, all of that, because it slows them down. It forces them to start playing with things. And because they get into the zone and they see things, they start seeing patterns and the stories that are being told, especially when I teach them, okay, here's what this tells you. And then they go, oh, I had no idea. That's amazing. That's so much fun. I can use that information to attract more clients and better clients. And I can do all of this stuff. But because they're so afraid of their numbers, they're missing those stories. And what are you reading or listening to? Because you need to be like, there's so many absolutely amazing business, marketing, self-improvement books out there that you need to be taking in this new information every single day, one way or another. I, I have a massive library <laughs> and I read every day. Uh, one of my absolute favorite, and this will tell, tell you how old I am. One of my favorite things. Yes, it is an actual iPod. This is not my smartphone. It's my <laughs> iPod because this doesn't ring. This doesn't send text, none of this stuff. So I just have my audio books on here. So when I'm at the gym or, or I'm a long drive or something like this, I'll put on one of my books to listen to. And I'm not talking about like the, the latest Tom Clancy or Daniel Steele. I'm talking like business books. And a lot of my books I listen to or read over and over and over again, because each time I read it or listen to it, I'm in a different place in my life and my business, and I can take the information in better. Mm -hmm. But always be working on building up your skills and then what do you need to be working on some people need to be working a lot more in the marketing and that's typically more us introverted people because we will keep you give us a job we will knock your socks off like oh my god <laughs> you're going to be impressed and our offices are organized and neat and tidy and we can find everything but we don't typically like you want me to go out and talk to a real live human being and tell them about my business oh dear is there like can I go clean toilets instead? <laughs> <laughs> or you have some, the other people that they have no problem making a sale, going out and talking to people in the marketing. They've got that down pat where they have the problem is they actually, now I actually have to deliver on this stuff. Well, that's not fun. They're, they're usually more disorganized. They don't have any systems. They're like the CRA is calling them because how come your taxes haven't been filed in four years? <laughs> so everybody has different strengths and different areas that they need to be working on. But a few things that are standard across the board. Who's in your circle? Like I said, you need to be surrounding yourself with other business people for so many different reasons. I want you to do your own bookkeeping and you need to be putting together marketing, especially systematizing your marketing. Who are you going to be? Who are your clients? And if you say everybody, we're going to go smack because no, they're not. <laughs> and then what are you going to be doing for marketing consistently? Because so many people make the mistake, okay, I'm going to do something. I'm going to put it on a big ad or, or, or a big thing. And, oh, I didn't pick up a hundred clients from that. So obviously it didn't work. So I'm going to switch over to this one. And then that didn't work. So I'm going to switch over. You are better off picking one or two things and every, every day or a few times a week consistently out it goes, out it goes, out it goes. Because people, the, the, the myth of people buy, like you just have to have the right ad, people will see it and then they will come, is horse hockey. People need to know, are you serious? Are you consistent? And we have to drip and drip and drip until people get wet. Some people get wet faster, but... I've had people that have been in my pipeline, literally my record is 14 years that I've been dripping on them. And wasn't even aware that I was dripping on them because they were on my newsletter list from years and years and years ago. And okay, now we're finally ready to do something. 14 years is my record. Well, and, and I hear that often from clients, right? So um, so I'll hear that. It's like, oh, well, I've been following you on Facebook for such a long time. 
and and they actually go back to like the first time that they've actually connected with me and it was like oh really like that was like that was like early on or that was like five years ago or whatever right so it's actually kind of interesting how that um how that works business and it's a long game and if you're playing it for the long game it works out if you're if you're always looking for the instant or the the short term or the get rich quick that that's the magic bullet people are looking for which doesn't exist yeah and that's really important for us to be able to look at because you want to be able to work with somebody who's long term. And like you said, having the right people in your circle is also really important. So the number of VAs that I have gone through have been horrendous, right? So um, I have some really great people on my team right now that is amazing. And I love and not that I didn't love some of the things that these other people were doing. However, it's that consistency and helping move forward and doing and doing those things. And so, um, and so like I have, um, I have Robin and I have um, Sahara that are incredible in, in the things that they're doing, how quick that they're doing them, uh, the efficiency. And of course, sometimes, sometimes we drop the ball on, on different things. Cause like, so do I, so do you, so does everybody. Right. So there are times when it's like, Oh man, I forgot to do that. Um, or something happened that life just happens, right? So right now I'm trying to catch up because for us, it's a holiday or it was a holiday weekend. So yep. that one day of doing <laughs> what you would normally be doing. And then of course I've got another project because I'm in, on a, um, a summit that's coming up. So then I had like those things added to my pile as well. So now it's like, oh yeah, okay, now I have to catch up. So th there's always a day lost. You guys are going to have that day lost coming up um, next week. Um, right. So that's going to be one of the things that's going to happen and, and it happens. So, but it's about being able to have the right people on the team, but you need to be the right person on the team, I think. Right. Oh yes. You definitely have to be doing the work and I will get back to the word consistent. It's not what you do every now and then that matters. It's matters. What are you doing day in, day out, week in, week out? So because when, when you're doing that, number one, you're building up your habits and our habits are everything. Most of what we do is habits. So if you set yourself up with good habits, you're fine. If you haven't, you've got problems, but people like the people that are watching us on Facebook or Instagram or wherever it is, or the networking events that we're doing, they need to know that we're serious and consistency shows that we're serious because who wants to deal with somebody who's flaky? and inconsistent yeah no one you didn't you don't want to work with somebody that way i don't want to work with somebody that, who's that way i don't know of anybody who does so if you want people to work with you you have to make sure that they know you're not inconsistent and flaky yeah. and the good thing is it doesn't take that much it just like what are your habits that you are building in your life in your business so that things are flowing and that flow, I think, makes a huge difference in terms of being able to like going from moving from that job to um, to success. And but I think one of the things that um, I see and but I'm not a business um, coach, I'm, I do life and wellness um, focus more primarily on anxiety. But one of the things that um, that I see with people that I do work with, because obviously people that are in business have anxiety um, or some, not everybody. Um, so some of my clients are in business and but it's that consistency or like um, I know that you use the word consistency, but it's that um, it's that flow of like, so it's like, OK, well, I'm motivated. I'm going to do all the things. And then you've got like a thousand things on your list that you can't get accomplished, that you can't do. So being able to take that list and breaking it down so that it becomes more manageable, I think is um, one of the other um, things that I would see as being something that would be um, relatively important. Oh, oh, huge. Because when you're like, not even just when you're in business, everybody has a, has a to-do list that's a mile long. And if you're looking at the whole entire to-do list, it's extremely overwhelming. And so people, some people will throw themselves into it and they're trying to do everything and they're working their butts off and they're still not getting it done because it's not possible. We're all going to die with stuff in our inbox, but, <laughs> or they'll just completely shut down and not do anything. And I go, what do I do? What do I start with? This is why, like I said, I love getting people in the idea stage when they're still in the job that they want out because I'm going, okay, we can pick. And, and, and there is no one perfectly right thing to start with. You're going, okay, pick something that, that attracts you right now. Is it putting together your systems? Is it, 
Is it figuring out like your, your colors and thinking about stuff for putting together your social media? Um, what, it, like, there's so many different things. And let's pick like a couple of those things in that general area and let's work on those. We don't have to worry about the other ones. We'll work on those. And then once those are done, then we'll pick the next thing and the next thing. And that's all that you can do. But when you're doing it that way, it breaks it down into manageable steps and it makes it so that you actually get things done. I think about it this way. So um, I've done a few marathons, not because I like them. I hate them. They're the most horrible experiences of my life. And I've done natural childbirth, but I got sucked into doing one with a friend of mine who is a major marathoner. So my first marathon was Los Angeles in 2011. And if you don't know, that was the year that they had um, basically a West Coast hurricane. It was horrible. Um, torrential rain. Like I'm, I'm doing one part of it and we're going up a bit of a steep. And the rain is coming down so, so hard that the fenders of the cars that are parked on the street. And it took me over nine and a half hours to finish that marathon. And the only reason I did is because my friend and his son were giving me someone to curse at just far enough ahead <laughs> I would finish. But I'm really, really glad that I did do it because it taught me so much. And I'm going, so if you don't know, a marathon is 26.2 miles or in Canadian, 42.2 kilometers. It's a bloody long distance in good conditions, let alone horrible ones. And I keep thinking back to all the stuff I've been through in my business. And there's been parts where it was really good and lots of just slogging through. But the only way I got from uh, Dodger Stadium to the Santa Monica Pier was literally one foot in front of the other for literally nine and a half hours. I earned that finisher's medal and the ugliest orange shirt I've ever seen in my life <laughs> by not being the fastest, uh, definitely not the fastest. I am one of the ones that finished because there's an awful lot of people that dropped out. And my fat ass got across the finish line because I'm stubborn. <laughs> and I was surrounded by wonderful people that loved me and supported my ass across the finish line. And that's the and same that's, thing with business. And that's so important, right? So like I have, um, and same as like, so I have some um, clients that come and go and that's, that, that's normal. But I also have some clients that are so loyal and so committed to that I can actually put something out and say, okay, guys, this is what I'm looking for, or this is what I'm thinking that I want to be able to offer next or that I want to be able to do next. And they give me that honest feedback that helps me to be able to know that, yes, this will work or no, that won't work. Or um, have you tried this or have you tried that? And so I have those, those, um, those consistent people. I do have like other people outside of that, but in terms of my clients, because I think that that is also one of the, um, is one of the, the trade things, right? So like we have our um, Soulful Life Hacks is going to be opening up soon and we're going into our third year this um, this term. And so one of the things that, um, that I've noted is that people who've actually joined me and jumped in, they're still there three years later. And not that they don't have that they haven't made any progress and they have to continue to work with me. It's about being able to continue to do that work and being able to continue to um, get stronger and, and helping others coming in and that are coming in and helping them get stronger. And that gives us a sense of satisfaction and stuff as well. So the people that have been with me for the last three years haven't not accomplished anything. They've accomplished huge things and, but they've been, um, they've been doing the work, right? So like, that's one of the other things. So like I'm, I'm comparing apples to oranges cause it's not the same business, but it's still in terms of that task, no, right? right? Getting those similar. things done. So and many similarities. Business right. is business is business. Product or service might change. Industry might change, but the basics are the same no matter what. That's why, People say, who do you work with? I work with new business owners, idea stage to two years. I've got tradespeople, I've got coaches, I've got professionals, I've got retail, like everybody. The basics of business are the same. So my story and your story, while the exact details will change, the foundational pieces are consistent. 
Yeah. And then, and that's like, it's so important as again, it's going back to that consistency. So like, I know I keep referring back to anxiety because that's, that's what I specialize in, but it's like, if you want to be able to overcome the anxiety, if, if it's something that's, um, that you've been living with for a long time. So like I've grown up with anxiety, I've had anxiety for a long time. Doesn't mean that, um, I'm going to get to a point where I never have anxiety because those little things are going to come back and, and play and resurface and, and recircle. But it's like, I've got the skills to be able to, um, to manage it so that I don't end up where I was seven years ago, where I don't end up where I was when I was six, where I don't end up where I was when, um, something had happened. And so it's just really important for, and so in, the same falls in under that business. Um, I think, right? yeah, using, so. using anxiety, I think, um, this, when I first started my business, because my biz, I wasn't pla I was sort of planning on starting my business, but it was going to be further in the future because I'd had people going, Cammy, you need to start your own business. You need to start your own business. You need to go into sales. And I kept putting it off. And then I got fired, which is wonderful because I absolutely hated where I was. I was already <laughs> looking for another just over broke, um, doing interviews, all that stuff. One more week and I would have been into another job, which would have been better for a little while. But then all of like the same stuff would have all come up i was sick and tired of working for creepy and competent old men and so i got fired and he was expecting me to be upset i actually just this big smile broke all across my face and i started giggling because <laughs> 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 i was going i'm free i never i'm finally going to do it i'm just going to start my business and so i did that but when i first started my business the stuff that used to put me into panic and you know keep me up at night and like I'm, I'm, I'm lying in bed at two o'clock in the morning going, what the hell am I doing? And all of this stuff, <laughs> like that, that, like, that's not even like a hiccup in my world. Now I've been in business for over 20 years. The stuff that bothered me 10 years ago. Yeah. Not a problem. We, we know how to deal with that. The stuff that's like causing me a little bit of stress and stuff right now in a year or two, it's going to be nothing. I don't even want to think about the stuff that's going to make me sweat a few years from now <laughs> because right. it's always, it's just, you're building your skills and yeah. It's not that this stuff ever goes away. Like you talk about anxiety. Most people have anxiety. Some people have it as a much bigger problem, but we all have people think, well, I can't go into business because I have fears and worries. Well, guess what? So does everybody else on the planet. So does every successful yeah. business person. We just come up with the coping skills and we build up our strengths and our abilities through the stuff that we've learned and the things that we've put together and the people that we have in our world to move past it. You move through it. You never get rid of it. Your, your, your fear and anxiety is like, it's, it's part of you in a three-legged race. You just get better at running it. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And, and I like the three-legged race analogy because again, it comes back to who are your supports, right? That three-legged race is so much easier when you have somebody who you can trust, somebody who you can connect with and somebody who can help you move forward because otherwise you're like trying to pedal and one person's trying to go one direction and you're trying yeah. to move the other leg. Right. So, so when you can actually have that, that consistency. So going back to one of the things that you said was like at primary is who are you working with and how are you actually helping to move forward? And like, again, going back to like real life in terms of anxiety um, and working with people, it's like, so who's in your circle? So like the people in your circle, the ones that are actually going to continue to cause you anxiety, if they are, throw them out, like get rid of them. It's not, it's not worth having that in your life. And I think that that fits under business as well. Yep. Oh, right. Totally, so like totally and completely. But this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love business when it's done right. As far as I'm concerned, it is the most beautiful form of art that there is because it doesn't just affect us and our families, but it's our customers and our community and the positive impact that we can have. But it's, 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 it's learning and growing and you're in the driver's seat. One of the things that I hated for all the years that I was employee I don't have a problem looking after my own mistakes. Yes, I'm human I'm a, and I make them. I'll own yeah. up, we'll fix them and all of this stuff. But I hated not having control of my life. I'm going, I'm, 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 I have no, I have all the responsibility when it's bad, but I don't have any of the responsibility to make it better or make any of the choices. So I'm just stuck yeah. with this. And um, dealing with people that they're constantly messing up, but it's my fault. And 
I want to be doing this because I can see that this is a better way of doing it. But no, because I have a job and I'm not in control. I'm stuck doing this stuff and all of that. Mm -hmm. I hated that. So when, when I started my business and I'm going, I have all the control. I can choose what I'm going to work on, when I'm going to work on and all of that. But then it also comes with ability. You have to make the choices to do it because nobody's Absolutely. going to make you. Absolutely. And it do really does make all the difference in the world. And like you said, like coming from that J-O-B to doing your own thing. Yes, there's like so many things that um, potentially are headaches, but you get to be the one who makes the choice as to, okay, well, like, do I keep that headache or do I try and do something different or do I take a different approach or do I um, or do I just throw it out completely and say, okay, let's let's go back to the drawing board. And all of those choices are perfectly acceptable in different situations because sometimes yeah. we do need to just find a different way sometimes we just need to slog through it's okay no we got to get through it sometimes it's a different approach that like but they're all appropriate at different times which once again comes back to who's in your circle because when you have uh other business owners in your world and you're having a difficulty like one of the most important things is having um somebody i call your business 911 and it's somebody that you can phone up when you're having a, a, a challenge or just one of those days where you're going, I must be out of my cotton pick in mind to be doing this. <laughs> and you phone them up. And the first thing you go is, okay, I need to vent for a moment. Do you have a minute or two? Because consent is important because sometimes, so they go, yes, of course. So then you can go, let it all out. Yeah. And this is something that it's safe to. And they can, they can be giving you advice or just whatever, but their job is to help you through it. Um, remind you of why you're doing this stuff. Love you, hug you, swat you on the butt, and go get back at it. So you need to have those those safety numbers. But sometimes, and and I do this. I'm this number for a lot of my clients and friends. Um, they'll call me when they're going through this stuff. But it's like when we're so deep in it, we can't see anything. It's like we've got these super super blinders on. And when we're talking to our other person, it's like, oh, there is yep. a forest, not just these big trees in my way. <laughs> I don't know how to get past this tree. And so, yeah, and I and love that analogy. Blinders off when you could go just one step over to the right and you go around the tree. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Because I love that I analogy. See that because you had the blinders on. This is why, like you said, a good networking group, like you said, having some other good friends that are business owners, because trust me, the conversation between employee type people and business owner type people, it's, it's, it's night and day. It's 180 yeah. degree difference. It really is. And so, and so this morning, like I have a very long day today and a super long day today. I always do a 12 hour day on Wednesdays. And so, but this morning it was like 6am kind of start this morning. So we had a networking meeting with um, people around the world. So um, the leads are in Australia for, so for them, it was like, 8 p.m. Um, however, for us, it was like 6 a.m. And so having that networking meeting and and I love and I always love the way that the universe kind of puts things together and puts things into perspective is that today was it just so happened that we're actually talking business and starting your business and moving forward. And so within this networking um, meeting is that, and I actually wrote it down and it's still in front of me from um, from this morning's networking meeting because I, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I know that I have to put it up to remind myself because it's not something that I didn't know. It's spark. The spark is all that you need in your life, in your um, spark is all you need to light a fire. Right. So the spark is all that you need to light the fire. And because we were broken down, broken out into um, um, I apparently my brain's not working when they split you into like small groups. Um, <laughs> so they moved us over. And so we're having a conversation. And although we're coming from a completely different business like we all are coming from different businesses and yet we had like very similar in terms of like this is where I'm stuck this is what's going on this is what's happening and even though the scenarios or situations were different that quote that that person that one person who had that insight and said okay but all you need is that spark do you still have the spark and and it wasn't me that uh, that this person was making reference to 
um, he was talking to someone else who was like, everything just feels like it's all dampened. And, and his question was, so do you still have the spark? And it was like, huh? Huh. Yeah, but it's completely oh. relevant to you at that moment. Yeah. And that's one of the things like, yeah, I love, I love the networking group because, um, you know, that one thing. And, and a lot of the time it just, oh, that's the perfect thing that I needed right now. And they weren't even talking directly to me, but it's still Matt, it still yeah. resonates with you because that's what you needed and it's provided. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I said, I'm going to have to put this up somewhere so that it can remind me because that is something that we forget that all we need is that spark. We just need that spark. And, um, and when you made reference to the trees, I'm like, oh yeah, let's not use the spark with the trees, but <laughs> here, here I just moved to BC and uh, the last few years we've basically been on fire over the summer. So I'm, 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 I'm very glad because since we moved here, we've gotten rain every single day and, and people are, oh, you're, you're here. We're apologizing for the weather. This is cooler and rain, wetter than we usually get. No, no, no. This is perfect. <laughs> every day that it rains, things stay green and it's less than it's yeah. going to turn. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So one of the things that uh, I can't believe that we've been chatting so much. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to be able to kind of close off with is um, I know that you have a, a special gift that you wanted to be able to offer um, anybody who wants to be able to take a look at where things are going. And like I said, I'm definitely sharing this off to um, to a uh, one of my clients who are is in that stage of I want to get things started, but I'm I'm Leary, so I'm going to be reaching out to her and sending this um, the po this podcast over to her, and so because I think that it's really relevant to her. So, do you want to talk a little bit about your gift, and I will share the link. And uh... so, I put together um, what I call the Solopreneur Self Assessment. It's a, a little questionnaire that you can quickly do on your own to figure out where your strengths are, because everybody has strengths. Um, where you have weaknesses because everybody has weaknesses and the most important stuff the stuff that you don't even know you don't even know and to kind of figure out okay where where am i and where are the places that i need to be getting the most help and the and, and the support so that you can do this um i've pretty much found very very few people are not capable of starting their own business there are definitely and that there's there's nothing wrong with that i've been teaching small business um classes for over 18 years and I've had two different people over the years after going through the weekend class with me going you know what Tammy this just isn't for me and I'm going wonderful I am so glad you figured this out now rather than two years in you put in your life savings all this time and effort to realize that this is not your dream that you don't like doing it and you shouldn't have done it in the first place I'm a bigger fan of that so great that's a win but if you really do want a business you can always build up the skills. That's always a possibility. So if you go to my website, which is ksabusiness.ca slash gift, you can um, download that. And if you wanted to book a free 15 minute consultation with me to see if you want to be working with me or how we can help you, that can be done there as well. So, and that's great. And so, and I love the fact that you actually have this where you can actually see um, whether or not this is for you or not for you or, um, and being able to kind of figure out ahead of time. So, like I said, I want to definitely reach out to um, my one client and share this off. But I also think that this is fabulous for anybody who's listening and that you've been on the fence, don't really know what it is that you want to be able to do. And so I think that that would be a good, um, a good guideline and place to start. So is there anything else that you wanted to share before we headed out? Oh, well, the big thing is, like I said, if, if you have a dream of starting a business and you're willing to do the work, that's the big thing. Are you willing to do the work? You can do it because you can always learn the skill sets. And especially with our, with our modern world and VAs and stuff like this, there's so many ways that you can get affordable help for like a few hours here and a few hours there. A lot of people go, oh, I don't have the money to hire people full time. Well, you don't need to. But if you're willing to do the work, anyone can succeed in business. And I think that that makes a huge difference as well is being able to, again, making sure that you're taking things in bite sized pieces instead of um, trying to take it all on all at the same time. Well, one of the, the great kindergartner jokes and stuff, and it's so 
so you ask a kindergartner, how do you eat an elephant? What will they say? Usually they don't know, but it's like one it's, bite at a time. That's how you yeah. do anything. If you stop and think of, okay, you, you and I are obviously, we've got, we've got a little bit of um, experience and maturity with us. If we go through and if we start, started right from the moment when we started eating solid food to where we are now, how many elephants do you think we've actually eaten in terms of volume and weight? Probably a couple. <laughs> I'm probably a couple. Or anything, but if you stop and think about it, most people eat three times a day and you're going from solid food to being a grown up. We've eaten a few elephants. Think of it that way. It was just one bite at a time, one bit at a time. Yeah. Or if you're just looking at how am I going to eat an elephant? People, oh, I can't, that's just too much. But if you're thinking about it every single day, I'm going to be taking a few bites. I'm going to be taking a few bites. We've eaten some elephants, Rolly. <laughs> Absolutely. We definitely have. And so, and it's really important. And, um, and when we actually take, take that part of it out and stop looking at it from that, that huge perspective. And, and I don't remember what class it is that I teach that in. I actually have a, an image of a, of an elephant that actually says like, how do you eat the elephant? Right. So like that, that analogy came from my girlfriend like years ago. And it's like, that has been something that I throw in there all the time because it is so, because the first time she asked me that question, I looked at her and went, I don't know. And, and she said like, seriously, just one bite at a time. And it was like, oh, oh yeah. So I actually have in one of my programs, I actually have an image of the, of the, the first image is the, the, um, is the elephant. And then the next one is with the fork. Like there's actually a fork um, image that they're actually eating it like with the one with the fork. And so it's just really important. So thank you so much, um, Tammy, for joining us today. And I am super excited to be sharing this off with, like I said, one of my clients in particular, but I'm also really super excited to be sharing this with anybody who has been sitting on the fence and don't know where to go. And so this is definitely a, uh, a good place to start. So thank you so much for, uh, for joining us this morning. Well, thank you ha for having me. It was a fun conversation. <laughs> okay. So for the rest of you, I will see you next week and um, for chatting with wisdom and talk to you guys soon. Bye for now. <clears throat>